On this episode of Base Coverage, I welcome two of the newest Helvelde guards, quarterback Carlton Atkins, wide receiver Anthony Brown. They come to the locker room and chop it up. We doing everything they talk about. You know I'm everything a boss about. Not putting work and gotta toss them out. I'm really biting, they just barking now. I'm really riding, they just parking now. His street, what to talk about. See the big H when I'm walking out. Hey, before we start the show, I just want to say thank you all for tuning in. Subscribe to the channel, drop a comment, share the video with a friend. This is Base Coverage, and we talk European League of Football. Oh, welcome back to Base Coverage, everyone. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, before we get this show started, I just want to give a shout out to my Kalanda Broncos, who, who kick off the Switzerland season on Sunday against Winter Tour. Um, so just want to give a shout out to them. So I'm representing them. I'm representing them on today's show, which segues me into this next uh topic that we're gonna talk about as you know, during the all season interviewing a couple guys, a couple coaches, and you know, I'm like, when's the perfect time to talk about my guards, right? So had to do some coordinating, but I finally got uh some new signees for the Hell Valley guards coming on to talk some ball. So QB Carlton Aiken, wide receiver Anthony Brown, fellas, what is going on? How you guys doing? Good, good man. man. Appreciate you having us on. Yeah, yeah, most definitely appreciate you guys coming on. This was long overdue. I had to see where the team was was going in order to make sure I'm bringing on the right people because we ain't gonna bring on no scrubs on on this show. We gotta keep it <laughs> straight, straight, straight factual. But um, hey, no, nah, thank you guys for coming on. Um, Carlton, I know you played in the league last year. Anthony, don't get me wrong, this is your first time overseas, right? Yes, sir. Hey, you're about to be in for for an adventure. Because this is uh this is one hell of an opportunity, and you'll learn more about it. Obviously, Carlton will show you the ropes in terms of like you know how to live that overseas life, what to do, and you know how to how to navigate through that. But you know, in regards to playing ball overseas for the first time, joining the guards, my first question is: is what do you know about the European League of Football? Because this is this is the best league in Europe. So your first time in Europe, playing in the best league in Europe, I think that's a statement to your athletic ability and who you are. But what are your thoughts on the league, the guards, and going to play in Switzerland? Yeah, man, I mean, it's absolutely a blessing. You know, it's unheard of first year overseas to be playing in the ELF. Um, it's a privilege, man. Um, I'm, I'm excited, uh, honestly. You know, it kind of happened random one day. I was texting Carlton and – everything fell, fell into place. You know, I'm excited to be out there in Switzerland. It almost feels like playing for a national team out there, you know, the only team in the league from Switzerland. Um, so, it, you know, it's going to be a lot of responsibility on our shoulders, but, you know, I, I got nothing but faith in my quarterback, you know, so I'm excited to get out there and just get to work. Man. Nah, most definitely. And that's why I root for the guards because I played three years overseas for the Broncos so I root for those guys, being that that's the only league in the ELF. And I know you talk with Silas a little bit, obviously, about his experience, stuff like that. What are some of the things he mentioned about playing with the guards? Oh, man, I, I actually haven't met up with him yet. I'm excited to meet okay. up with him. He's actually, he's actually living about 20 minutes from my hometown. So Gotcha. So you guys are close. Oh, yeah. So whenever I get back to Texas, I'm going to be – I'll be hitting them up, getting some Tex Max, you know, because I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm out in Florida right now training. So there we go, there we go. Well, hey man, I know the fans gonna be excited. I watched some of your film in terms of like your skill set. You get someone who could definitely stretch the field, which is something that we've been missing. I I say we like I'm part of the organization. Something that the guards <laughs> have been that the guards have been missing uh, last year. And Carlton, you spent some time in the league, a couple games playing with uh, Barcelona. Um, for uh, for the Dragons, obviously it was a short stint, but you got your experience. You know mm -hmm. why? Why the guards? You know why? Why come to play for the, uh, the team in uh, the team of Switzerland? And why did you take this opportunity? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think the number one thing was Coach Chow. I mean, you look at it, Coach Chow. Yeah, Dr. You, Chow, you look, Uncle Chow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you want to talk about you know coaching legends, uh, the goat, if you will. Um, you know, I have a high, high respect for coach Chow, um, uh, just everything he's done in his football career. Um, and the way I got in contact with the guards, I was, I was supposed to do, you know, a little showcase, a, a camp for some CFL, uh, CFO, UFL, um, teams and like a couple indoor teams. And he was like running the camp. I ended up not going, but the the head scout of the camp spoke so highly of me. Coach Chow was like, I have to, 
like I heard the name before, but I have to reach out. And then I told him I was in Barcelona last year. He remembered me. Um, so it really came down to going back to Barcelona again for um, going out um, and, and playing in Switzerland. Um, I think Switzerland is a is a beautiful country. Um, I know I'll, I'll enjoy it. Uh, Barcelona was a great, great fan base. Nothing but, you know, respect for the for for the Dragons as well. Um, but I definitely I definitely wanted to, to, to switch scenery a little bit. Um, just talking to Coach Child, seeing his vision. Uh, you know, their faith that they had in me, you know, I, I like that, uh, you know, it's a good game plan going forward. And uh, yeah, talking to John, you know, that defense is is really good, even though we lost, um, I don't want to pronounce his name wrong, Maceo, Maceo Beard, Mace, Maceo Beard. I know we lost Mace, him. Mace, you know, they call him. Mace. I know we lost Mace and that's a huge void that we, uh, that we need to fill. But um, I think the, the defense, you know, is really, really good. Um, you look at, you know, quarterbacks who are great, not only in the, the um, ELF, you talk about NFL, you know, it's always great defenses. Um, so I think, you know, the, the bones are there um, to be a really, really good team in this league. Um, you know, it's just the, the missing pieces. And I feel like with Ant, myself, a couple of players, you know, Leo that I've played with before, um, um, you know, uh, can't, I don't want to pronounce anybody's name wrong. No, <laughs> listen, I've been, messing, I've been messing up names for four years. Just go and pronounce it wrong, man. Maybe, oh, maybe it's – Phineas, the running back we got from the surge last year. Uh, I think we offensively, it's, it's looking really oh, good. Phyllis, um, yes. Pasqualini, yeah. <laughs> Pasqualini. I knew his last name is Pasqualini. I mean, he torched us when I played against him at Barcelona. But I think it's there offensively, so I was really – I'm excited. Um, I think, you know, the structure is there. Uh, we just got to put the pieces together. Most definitely. And the bones, especially defensively, are there. Obviously, we lost Mace. Uh, kudos to him. You know, he's going back home. Yeah. Can't, can't, can't knock him there. And obviously, yeah. Jim Ward – Going to Milan, you guys will play against yeah. him. He's, he's the head coach, yeah. but uh, most of the most of the guys return, which is great because that means we got experience. We got guys that mm -hmm. know the league and and it's uh and know what it's about. But I'm glad you mentioned Coach Chow in the in the beginning of it, Uncle Chow, and I'm glad they brought him back because now he kind of has yeah. familiarity with you know overseas and the league and the offense and stuff like that. Love the guards. Our offense was trash last year. I'm sorry, percent. <laughs> our, our offense was trash. I mean. We, we want to talk about, like, 14th rushing offense, 15th passing offense, 13th in points, 14th total. I mean, there's only 17 teams in the league, you know, so we definitely weren't where we need to be. But also, I think he had a hard time, or the offensive general had a hard time gelling and coming together. Obviously, we dealt with injuries at quarterback. You know, Silas yeah. was playing quarterback at, at one point. We didn't really yeah. have any weapons outside of, you know, outside of silence until midway through the season when they started getting some momentum. So the office definitely needed work. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you guys have had your meetings and talking, you know, ball offensively. And I'm not sit sitting here asking for, you know, the secrets of the game plan, but what's the potential of what this offense uh, could look like? Ed? I mean, I got to kind of piggyback off of Carlton, man. Coach Chow such a blessing to be in his presence, man. I mean, <laughs> the football mind that he's got is crazy. So, you know, I actually, my, my college team is based off of Mike Leach offense. Um, and coach Chow is rest in peace, man. rest in peace, Mike Leach. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and then I was talking to him about, about offense and he was like, Oh yeah, Mike Leach. I remember whenever he used to come in my office when he was the GA at BYU and like, just like the legend that, that Chow is, but you know, our offense, you know, we want to be really dynamic this year. You know, he he mentioned the struggles on offense last year and, you know, going through quarterbacks and injuries doesn't help. Um, so, you know, we we got a, a surefire quarterback this year and wanted to get somebody that that's similar to Silas Nasita, you know, but more of a, a receiving threat, you know. So, you know, it's nice to be able to compare yourself to somebody that you used to grow up watching at Baylor, you know, so um, – so yeah, I think I think we're gonna be dynamic this year. You know, move move me around the field, get me uh, some mismatches, um, open up some other guys if they want to. You know, put two people over. So yeah, and I think that's the one thing we struggle with with Silas is obviously great running back, great skill set. Obviously, everyone always thought that he was gonna be the Reggie Bush type guy in Chow's offense, but there's a lot of things that also have to factor into that with, you know, obviously offensive line play, quarterback play, and when you're the only real threat, you can never really get going. And honestly, I don't think we really knew where we wanted to play Silas. Like, I didn't know, like, I think we would have had a better idea if he was just strictly running back or strictly receiver. 
you know, mm. but he, he was signed as a running back, started against Barcelona as a receiver. So I don't think we really had an idea where Silas was going to play. Um, but we also needed more weapons around them. Uh, they signed uh, Anton Jale, great guy. He, I don't think he turned out to be the receiver that they thought he was as a true number one, um, but still mm. had, you know, some success. Uh, his first two years uh, in the league now playing in the GFL. So, you know, we'll see. Obviously, there's other weapons that got to, you know, come around in the offense. But, you know, I'm, I'm looking to I'm looking to see how this offense is going to gonna fold and, and take shape and just seeing, like, some of the guys that they signed and some of the guys that they're bringing up up front. Um, I guess, you know, same question, you know, for you, Carlton. Um, not necessarily, you know, what the potential looks like, but how different is the offense, if any, is it going to look from last year? Um, I think it's going to be, I don't want to say totally different, um, just because we have to get to camp and see what works for us. Obviously, like it's, we can say we're going to, you know, throw the ball 50 times a game if we get there and, you know, we're running the ball great. and That's our bread and butter. That's what we're going to do. Um, but just talking to Coach Chow, um, you know, having our meetings and things like that, um, you know, he's the, one of the first coaches, you know, who didn't want to call me a dual threat. Um, you know, he called me a, 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 a passer first. And then I just so happen to be able to use my legs. Um, and that's always good to hear someone who has faith in, you know, your arm being a dual threat. You know, people always talk about your legs, but if someone respects your arm as well. Um, that's huge. So we're going to sling it around a little bit. That's what I'm excited about. Finally get to showcase my talent a little bit. I know last year I ran the ball a lot more. It was a little different, difficult situation just coming in two days before a game. And then obviously, you know, easy thing to do is run. So excited to have a whole camp going in, um, toss the ball around a little bit. But I think it's going to be really dynamic. I know we have some a lot of speed. Um, with Leo, receiver I played with in Poland, and Ant, um, I think it's going to be mismatched there. And then we have a deep threat with Leroy. Um, you know, he was like the best player in, in Switzerland last year. Young guy, he's only 21. Big, big dude. He's like 6'4", 200. So I'm I'm really excited to see. Um, he sent me clips um, of him running around. You know, I asked all the guys, even Ant. Um, they're probably annoyed with me by now, but I'm like, send me every time you hit the field, send me, send me, send me routes, uh, send me videos of you running routes. Like, I just got to see how you move. I have to see how you catch the ball. Um, so I think we're going to be really, really dynamic. I think we're a very well balanced offense attack, um, have great weapons at receiver, obviously have a great running back. And then, you know, if all else fails, you know, obviously best teams in, in the league have great old lines, the smaller market teams, old lines struggle a little bit, you know, it is what it is. So that's where I can come into play and use my legs and, you know, make up for that a little bit. So I think it's gonna be really well balanced. I, I'm excited. The pieces are there. Yeah, and that's and that's the most important piece is that the pieces you know are there. So you know, I'm definitely excited to see how this all you know comes together that last week in May as the season uh, kicks off. So um, yeah. let's dive let's dive into your schedule a little bit. You know, the guards are overlooked. Obviously, you know, it's no surprise. You know, we should be how we played last year. Whatever. All right, I'm in the media. Whatever. However, how it goes, we're overlooked. We should be. Whatever. Um. But looking at your schedule and looking at the team you guys are building and obviously around the league as well, mm-hmm. first half looks a little opportunist, opportunistic. All right, we got yeah, we got some we got some games where we could where we could do some things. Obviously, Barcelona yeah. twice, Barcelona first game, right? Right, Carlton. We get yeah, uh, we get that revenge that. game, yeah. and then we go to buy, and we got Milan, yeah. and you know the Raiders. Obviously, the surge is in there, but we proved we could beat the surge, and we're a better team than we were last year. You know, we'll see. We'll see. So the first half look, looks I, very opportunistic. Yeah, yes. a thousand percent. I mean, if you look at surge, just, just look at the surge from 2022 to 2023. I think they were the worst team Perhaps. in the league in 22. And they transited. They got the right pieces. They got the right coaches. Great, great coach. Um, got the right pieces in there. And they, and they changed it all around. Um, yeah. Why can't that be us? Um, you know, I think, like I said, I think we have the pieces. Um, I think it would be really good. It is a, a very good schedule. Um, some really good teams, but you never know. You yeah. never know the, from the year before right who's going to be. Everything looks good. You know, this team looks bad, and then you know they ended up you know going to the championship. So you never really know. Um, you just got to put your best foot forward, and you know. Yeah, search. It's fair to say, search are trash the first two years. I think they were two mm-hmm. and twenty before Jordan Newman came. But <laughs> right. I, but we all we all we all know that. That's, right. You know that's that's not in a. That's nothing. That's no diss. That's the truth. But so that no, first, no, yeah, that's you know respect. Yeah. So that that first half of the season looks very opportunistic. Mm-hmm. The second half gets a little dicey, and that's yeah, just going that's nice again. Stretch. We said we said that. Listen, everything looks good on paper, but we're going off like reputation and who these teams are. I mean, you got the Vienna Vikings twice, and maybe you know, maybe you don't know one of the top teams in Austria. 
uh, before joining the ELF, came to ELF their first year, won the championship last year, made it to the semis, was the number two seed. They just have a great and well-run organization, so they're always going to be good. You mm -hmm. got the you got the Munich Ravens twice. Everything that they're doing, you know, the coaches that they're bringing in, the players that they're bringing in, that's going to be a good team, right? And then I, I you got the Raiders, you got the surge again. But needless to say, the the meat and potatoes of your schedule is the second half of the season. At least is how it looks mm -hmm. now. And how important is it? How important is it to just get off to a good start, despite the fact that how athletes washed up athletes, how you guys professional not washed up athletes look at it as a one game season, you know, every week you want to go one and know how important is it to at least just get off to a fast start? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you want to, every, every season you want to start off with some momentum, you know, you want to be playing your best and, and most important games at the end, you know, you don't want to play games in the first half of the season that dictate whether you make the playoffs or not, you know, because you could not have all the pieces together until, you know, the second half of the season, uh, for us, you know, it's a great test. You know, we we go in week one against Barcelona and see who we are, you know, and then we get a week off to make the adjustments and then we then we get rolling, you know. And, you know, we get to, you know, five games, six games, we should have our identity by then, you know. Um, and then that's whenever stuff starts to get a little bit more difficult. Um, but, you know, like you said, it, it really is a one-game season because as we proved last year, you know, we were one of the worst teams in the league, but we went out and beat the surge that made the championship you know so um, it really is you know less about you know first half of the season's easy second half of the season's hard and more about you know just one week at a time um, because we got to prove to ourselves every week that we can do it you know and that starts obviously that starts in camp but you know when we start winning games this year and everybody starts to hop on the train you know we got to keep it keep it within the organization, keep it within us, you know, and just t keep taking it one one game at a time and keep doing what works for us, man. Most definitely. And the fans, you know, they're, they're going to support regardless. They supported the the guards from week one all the way to the end. So they're going to, they're going to, they're going to support you regardless. But, you know, obviously you win, you take care of business, you know, it gets a little bit more and more exciting in, in Europe. So um, let's wrap it up with some, e some easier going going questions easier going topics nothing nothing too crazy but Carlton I'll start with you looking at the schedule obviously we just finished talking about talking about it what's the one team you're looking forward to playing this year uh, believe it or not I, I'm not even going to say the Dragons um, you know I feel like everybody thinks I don't have any like bit done against Barcelona or anything like that um I love everyone there like all my former teammates who are still there That's so I wouldn't team. even say I wouldn't even say Barcelona I'm looking at the schedule right here. Um, I would probably say Munich. Um, I played against the Surge. You know, obviously a great team. I love their – love their um, either Munich or, or the Vikings. Just because, like you were saying, the Vikings have such a strong history. Yeah. Um, you know, a really – a great, great program. I talked to Coach Clay, Clay um, coming out of college. Um, so, uh, I think I'm excited for – one of those two teams, Munich or, or the Vikings. I, I like that. I like the top dogs. And those those fan bases, too, are crazy. Munich's first game got. Yeah. So, and check this out. Munich's first year in the league was last year. Their first home game, they got like 7,000, which That's was great. which is almost which is almost unheard of. But it just shows the backing that they're going to have. And obviously, they keep building. So it's it's got to keep going, keep growing. And Vienna, beautiful city, great organization. You know, they're one of the top five organizations in all of Europe. So those are those are definitely some two good teams. And let me ask you this, because you the Central, one of the cool things about the Central is like you go to like a lot of different countries, right? Mm -hmm. Spain, Italy, Austria, Germany, you know, obviously Switzerland, you're going to live there. What's one city you're looking forward to visiting? Because I want you to keep this in mind. Obviously, you didn't play, you, you haven't played overseas, but as much as it is about playing ball, being a professional, you know, being able to grow and teach and win, it's about enjoying the experience as well, too, when you have that, when you have those opportunities. So what's one city you're looking forward to visiting? Um, it's definitely got to be either Barcelona or Milan, man. Got to be. I'm very excited to go. Um, and then top three favorite city, I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm excited, yeah. man. And then, you know, last year we had like our little um, – camp scrimmage uh with paris 
Um, so I was really looking, hoping that we were doing that again, but it doesn't look like we are. But maybe on the bye week, me and Carlton will hop on a plane and go to Paris or something. You know, they got they got the uh, they got the Olympics out there this summer. Yes, sir. Paris to to go. Paris <laughs> to be crazy. Everyone, yeah. to be you gotta have. Well, you I want have. I want answer, I want to answer that question. Though. I mean, I'm excited to go to Milan. I'm excited to go to Milan. Um, yeah, just because my uh, one of my best friends from college, um, Dustin Yusinovich, he's playing for Milan right now for the Rhinos. Yeah. In the uh, the Italian league, um, he's killing it right now. So I mean, I, I'm excited to go down there, probably catch a couple games of him. Yeah. Um, towards the end of their season, you know, watch yeah. out for him because I think he'll actually get. A, I think he'll get called up at some point. Milan's a, Milan, Milan's a pretty cool city too. I obviously, haven't been yeah. there. You guys are going to be based in. I want to say Luzerne, where yeah. I was in Switzerland. It was a small town village. I want to say called Cor. I was about an hour and a half north of Milan, so I was really like close in driving distances. I was closer to like the Italian side where Luzerne's more like central near like Zurich and Winterthur, but Milan's a dope city. You can do you can do a nice weekend down there in the uh, in Milan, and that should be that should be a fun one to to take in. Yeah. Um. Last question. All right, and actually both we're gonna answer. All right, but yeah, I'll start with you. One thing you want. One thing you are excited to either do learn experience in switzerland <laughs> um honestly man i'm excited to to practice german with these people man i really am me and me and carlton been on duolingo trying to, <laughs> trying to keep the daily streak up man trying to, trying to learn you know so I'm, I'm just really excited to you know speak not only speak german but you know meet people from different cultures you know i'm from texas and everybody there is texan you know so <laughs> I'm excited to meet some German people, some Italian, French, you know, yeah. people that speak languages I've never heard before. I'm excited to just dive into the culture and learn as much as I can. Yeah. Experience. Most definitely. And Carlton, before you answer, uh, one thing about Switzerland is that it doesn't have its own language. It has four dialects. So a dialect yeah, of Italian, yeah. dialect of German, dialect of French. And the other one is. It's like an old Swiss language or something, right? Uh, Romanish? I don't know. It's it's a it's, it's a different language, but yeah, so the Swiss speak about four different languages, and it's like their own dialect. It's like when and when I say dialect, I mean it's like you know people from the north, people from the south, like speak. Right, 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 right. Yeah, it's like their right. own type of terminology. So, you know, you, if you're learning German, you might want to take up some Italian and French as well too. But now <laughs> everyone everyone speaks English, so you'll be good. So, Carlton, right. what about you? One thing you want to learn, experience, do in the beautiful uh, country of Switzerland. Besides I'm honestly excited. I'm excited to get out to Switzerland. Uh, me and my fiance talked about it. She's going to come out there for a little while. Just excited to get to Switzerland. Beautiful country. Uh, besides that, I feel like my two biggest things, um, you know, I'll tip my hat, hat to Ant. Um, just playing against him for four year, three years in college, um, seeing how dominant he was. Because, um, you know, the, the conference we came from, it's, it's, it's not light. You know, we have some really good talent. And to see how dominant he was for three years, um, you know, it gets me really, really, really excited um, to play with him. Finally, uh, I was tired of him torching my teams that year in and year out. So I'm really, really, I'm really, really excited. I can't even put into words how excited I am actually to play with him. Um, you know, it's like a dream come true. Um, and then secondly, you know, you're not supposed to as a as an athlete, but I watch. I, I, you know, I see. You know, I see the things they they put out there. So I see. You know, the little you know stuff they say about me, and I love that type of stuff because it, it fuels me. Like I, I love you know. Um, exterior motivations. Um, so I'm really, really, really excited just to prove, you know, what I got. I, I think the last two games were a small sample size, so I never really got to showcase my abilities, you know, get forced into the fire with two days of practice. Um, so I'm really, really excited to, uh, you know, open up some eyes this year. It, it's really excited for that. Let's get it, man. Come on now. Yeah. Let's go, bro. Listen, you got me fired. I'm about to come out of retirement. I got like, listen, listen. I got like two breaks left with me and maybe one hit. I can I can give you a series and that's I give you a series and that's it. But that's that's dope, man. That's good. That's good to hear that you know that fire, that hunger, that that's still there. Yeah, and for sure. And I'm I'm excited to see how you know the season plays out. I'm excited to watch you guys, and you know you'll be hearing from me, you know throughout the season because I'm always in you know the guards talk along with every other team. Are you coming to? Are you coming to a game? No, I can't this year. So the reason the reason I can't come to a game is. I'm expecting my third child. In oh, there you go. Congrats. So, yeah. unless I can, unless I can, find, unless I can find a babysitter to convince my wife to leave the child behind, I'll I'll be there. But unless <laughs> if that ain't happening, I, I won't make it. But 
I'm not going to rule it out. I'm going to say it's about a 20% chance right now. Hey, if we still play in September. And we listen, still play in September. I might, I might, I might start swimming across the Atlantic right now. <laughs> right <laughs> now. <laughs> hey man, I appreciate you guys coming on, chopping up a little bit. Sure. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely gonna be fun. Excited to, you know, things are starting to move quickly. You guys are going to camp next month, and then yep. it's gonna be, uh, and then we're gonna be in season. So, um, appreciate the time, fellas. Won't be the last time we chop it up, right? Stop. Stop. Animal,